Okay, I believe we are now recording, so we can go ahead and get started. Hello, uh, welcome to Fall 2020 COVID in service. Fun, fun. I am uh, coming to you uh, live uh, tonight from the LRC. Uh, I am in uh, room 314, which is the liberal arts uh, multipurpose room. I am using a virtual background on our new green screen. And uh, I, may, uh, I may change the virtual background uh, here in a moment, and uh, maybe we'll, we'll use a different one. Uh, all of you are, of course, invited uh, to come to LRC 314 and uh, use this space. Uh, we have uh, the green screen here. We have a teleprompter. Uh, we have uh, webcams. Uh, we have all sorts of stuff uh, for you to make exceptional educational content. So uh, I invite you to come here and uh, to check it out and uh, to join us. And uh, you are uh, more than welcome to use this space. There's a couple of different setups uh, in the multi-purpose room. Of course, one of them has been a conference room, sort of small conference room uh, for uh, us in liberal arts and for some of our students uh, to use. But uh, we've uh, kind of pushed the conference room uh, table aside and uh, we have a couple of different setups uh, for recording uh, this semester. And uh, I encourage you to make use of those. The uh, primary purpose uh, of our uh, meeting uh, this evening is just to explore ways uh, in which uh, COVID-19 is uh, impacting uh, instruction in liberal arts this semester and uh, to answer any questions uh, that you might have uh, about uh, starting the semester and uh, about processes or um, supplies uh, or you know anything else that might be uh, on your mind. Um, don't think that you have to get it all in uh, right here. If uh, you know you, you think of something uh, after the meeting, uh, feel free to get in touch with uh, me or with uh, your department head uh, or your lead instructor. Uh, of course, if you're in humanities, your department head is Bremen Ainsworth, and if you're in behavioral sciences, your department head is Dr. Dorothy Weaver. Um, I encourage you to reach out to them uh, with any questions that you might have after the meeting. Uh, in addition to this meeting, uh, both uh, Dr. Ainsworth and Dr. Weaver uh, will be hosting a meeting at the conclusion of week one uh, on Thursday or Friday uh, with their individual departments. And uh, you should look for the, uh, the Zoom link uh, for that uh, sometime next week. And uh, they, uh, they will answer any questions that may have arisen uh, as a result of, of trying all of this stuff on for about a week. Uh, what's working, what's not working, um, or, you know, if we wind up, you know, being like the Georgia public schools, uh, you know, how, how is our, our, our new level of, of quarantine at home going? And, uh, you know, what do we think about all that? So um, you will have uh, another opportunity, obviously, uh, to, to, you know, meet with us and to, to get some more information. We have uh, set up uh, LRC 330, uh, which is the uh, room directly across uh, or directly adjacent uh, from the division office uh, as, a, uh, as a hub uh, for our students to communicate. If uh, you have an on-campus extension, uh, they can uh, go into that office and uh, they can use the video phone, uh, which is on the desk there uh, at, the, uh, at, the, um, at, the, at the desk uh, to, to call you. Uh, there is, uh, of course, uh, you know, a lot of extensions uh, all over campus uh, and uh, they can use, you know, any of those. We also have a number of offices uh, that are set up uh, for uh, part-timers, um, many of which are there, you know, kind of directly across uh, from where Pat used to office uh, in kind of the humanities, you know, sort of area there. Um, there's uh, one uh, directly across from that that's also set up. Part-timers uh, are, are welcome to use that space, and uh, you could have a video phone uh, appointment uh, with uh, a student. You could use that office, and they could call you uh, from the video phone in 3.30 and uh, have a conversation with you. Also set up in 3.30 will be a Zoom account, uh, which uh, will be uh, assigned to liberal arts, and it will have Zoom information all of the Zoom information that's been shared with us. So literally your student could come to that space and just kind of click on your name and uh, initiate some communication uh, with you. So um, obviously, you know, students have varying levels of, of uh, technology. Uh, I've heard a story uh, about one of our students uh, who is sharing uh, a laptop 
with uh, their mom, uh, who was uh, doing some of her work uh, from home, and with two siblings uh, who were trying to do online school. Uh, they're all using the same uh, computer. So um, we've made some more resources available on campus to help students communicate uh, in situations like that. And uh, that's really what we have 330, you know, kind of set up to accomplish. Uh, we've uh, made a couple of changes uh, to uh, some other processes as well. Uh, we have uh, a handful of instructors uh, who are still uh, using scantrons uh, to, to varying levels. Um, you know, sometimes it's occasional with a test uh, here or there. Sometimes it's uh, more frequent uh, with some quizzes uh, here and there. Um, we even have uh, one um, gentleman um, who uh, is a professor at OSU Stillwater uh, who comes to our, our faculty room to use the Scantron uh, machine because it's no longer supported uh, at OSU Stillwater. Um, we are not going to be purchasing those Scantrons uh, for our students uh, this semester. Uh, in the past, we have done that and uh, we've, we've spent, I wouldn't say a sizable portion of the budget, but we've spent some of the budget uh, on that. Um, we, uh, we have a new uh, bookstore vendor, and that's Barnes & Noble, and uh, they've been very helpful uh, with uh, a number of different uh, things, including lots of adoptions uh, this, this summer. But uh, one of the things that they are going to take on uh, is the, the selling uh, of those Scantrons uh, in the bookstore. So if you are a professor who still uses Scantrons, uh, it, uh, those will be available uh, in the bookstore. And uh, we're just trying to minimize uh, any support for distributing paper things to the students and taking those things back up and then running them through something that might potentially aerosolize uh, the virus uh, in a commons area. So uh, we're out on Scantron this semester. Um, in keeping with that, my next point that I wanted to talk to you about was just kind of you know safety. Um, obviously, the, the less you come to campus, uh, the more safe you are. Uh, the more you can continue to shelter uh, in place, uh, the more safe you are. Um, the less materials uh, you take up and physically handle uh, from the students, uh, the more safe uh, you are. We would encourage you to minimize those contacts and minimize uh, those meetings and minimize that circulation uh, as much as possible, uh, while at the same time understanding that sharing your presence with the students and having a social presence uh, for the students uh, is remarkably important. Uh, during the conclusion of the spring term, um, I, uh, I kind of got to a point in the semester where I felt like I had pretty good online content for what was left uh, in the semester for my last three weeks. And uh, I was, I was kind of getting you know, done with uh, you know, the Zoom stuff and setting up the space and you know, kind of figuring that out, clearing something off, and, and, and dialing in and Zooming. And I put it out there to uh, my students, you know, whether or not they wanted to continue to Zoom since there were good online video resources uh, for the remainder of the semester. And almost uni universally, they, they uh, all said uh, that the Zoom meetings were good for them and that they appreciated it and uh, that it was something on their schedule and it kind of helped them, you know, sort of organize uh, what was going on. So. Um, I think that Zoom meeting and whatever level of connection uh, that does afford us uh, with our students um, is important. And uh, I, I think that it's important that they know that, that uh, we are available for communication uh, through that medium. Would uh, encourage you uh, to uh, minimize uh, trips to campus, would encourage you to minimize your actual physical trips uh, to the classroom. And uh, I've sent some correspondence uh, to that effect uh, a couple of times uh, this summer. I think I was fairly forceful uh, in my last uh, attempt to communicate uh, my, my preference about that with everyone. Uh, I don't uh, typically communicate with a whole lot of uh, capital letters uh, in a lot of my correspondence, uh, but I did put some capital letters and some exclamation points uh, in, in that particular correspondence. Um, I think the number one thing that all of us can do uh, to stay safe is to come up here uh, as little as possible. When we are up here uh, to, you know, attempt to stay in our offices or attempt to stay uh, in, you know, the recording space and uh, attempt to, you know, social distance uh, as much as possible. We uh, have made some other um, process changes and some other um, uh, advancements uh, for safety uh, on your behalf. 
Um, while I do uh, make that encouragement, um, I also completely acknowledge that each individual instructor teaches uh, each uh, class uh, in their own uh, unique way. And uh, you uh, may be uh, very comfortable you know, with moving parts of your instruction uh, online. Uh, you may be less comfortable with moving other parts of that instruction online. Uh, that is why uh, when, when we had a chance to talk about it as a division, we chose a hybridized uh, format. And uh, we thought that that afforded our instructors the most flexibility uh, in determining what they wanted to put on site and what they wanted to put online. Furthermore, we thought that if uh, we had professors who wanted to create community uh, by using Zoom uh, or other uh, social media, you know, kind of sharing platforms, uh, that that afforded them the most opportunity to use those additional technologies uh, to create community with, with our students. So we've, um, we've gotten um, all of those uh, schedule changes processed and made and made the move you know, to, to hybridize courses uh, for uh, the fall. Putting the decision to come to campus or not to come to campus back on you as the instructor um, we felt was the safest thing uh, that we could do for you. Uh, I am looking at the entire situation somewhat um, the same way that I do uh, inclement weather. Um, you are the best determinant as to whether or not, you know, your vehicle is going to make it to campus or not, right? You know if you've got a bum heater and four bad tires. Well, conversely, you know that you're a type 2 diabetic and uh, that you're uh, you know, technically uh, obese, and uh, you know uh, whether or not, you know, this is, this is a, a virus that's got your name on it, um, or, you know, something that you think that you could, you know, pretty easily fight off. Um, that's, that's your determination, and uh, we wanted that flexibility uh, for you, uh, and we wanted you to be able to, to make you know, some of those decisions for yourself. Conversely, um, I am encouraging, um, a, uh, a very liberal attendance policy uh, this semester. Uh, a little bit um, later uh, tomorrow, uh, I will share a sample a syllabus uh, with uh, the division and uh, that will have uh, some of my uh, attendance language. Uh, we are of course required to, uh, to take attendance and to report attendance uh, to the U.S. Uh, Department of Education if we, if we fail any students, and they want that for financial aid purposes, obviously FAFSA or federal dollars are paying for those courses. They want to know, you know, what the last date of attendance was, and if not, that was a, an earned F or not. Um, I encourage you to be as, as uh, generous as possible uh, with our students uh, when it comes to attendance. Uh, if you do uh, require a trip uh, to campus, uh, you know, do understand that not everybody is going to feel safe, you know, coming every single day and uh, that it behooves you uh, to not um, require uh, our students uh, to show up uh, for uh, those meetings. Um, the reason that I think that it behooves you is um, once we have uh, an attendance policy in place that is going to potentially penalize students for not coming and for, for non-attendance, it uh, then becomes, I think, you know, um, not too far uh, of a logical leap for that student to say, well, you know, I'm going to lose points. I have to go in. I know that we were technically exposed, you know, over the weekend, but I'm not feeling any symptoms. And, you know, we've got this required class. So here I go. You know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to head on into class. Um, it if we require attendance, it just sends, you know, the message to the students that they've got to be here, you know, pretty much regardless. And uh, I think that you'll find that some of them um, would, would put your safety at risk uh, to be at, in class and uh, would put uh, their classmates' uh, safety at risk uh, to be uh, in class. So uh, I think that being as generous as possible uh, with our attendance, uh, with our students this semester, uh, makes sense, and it makes sense from a, a really self-serving, uh, you know, kind of way um, that we don't want to get sick, uh, that we don't want to infect uh, others. Um, so uh, I encourage you to be as generous uh, as possible uh, with both uh, attendance uh, and with methods of contact. 
Uh, I, uh, I used uh, my cell phone with my students uh, for the very first time. Yes, I am one of those old school Gen Xers um, for the very first time uh, this spring. And uh, I'm delighted to report uh, that none of the students abused it. Uh, they all uh, were very respectful uh, of, of you know, my number, of, of my uh, time. Uh, they got in touch when they needed clarification. And uh, nobody you know, texted me something crazy at 2.30 or anything like that. Uh, of course, you know, if they had, uh, I, I can block them uh, on my cell phone. So uh, I afforded them that method of contact and uh, they, they didn't abuse it. We've also uh, made some, some efforts uh, to help you socially distance. Uh, if you do choose to have a, a meeting of your hybridized class uh, on campus, um, the facilities team uh, went through every classroom on campus and uh, applied the CDC formula about square footage uh, to each individual classroom and adjusted the caps uh, on the, the in-class uh, portions of the enrollment uh, appropriately. In addition to that, uh, you will find uh, a shelf, a, a black wire shelf has been set up uh, in LRC 331, and that is the division office. And uh, in, uh, on that black uh, wire shelf, you will see uh, several uh, different uh, rows of cardboard boxes. Um, in one of those, uh, Dr. Weaver has put together a ton of packages of masks, um, which are in sandwich uh, bags, kind of Ziploc you know, sandwich bags. So they've all been individually packaged uh, into a sandwich bag. Uh, so you have a hermetically sealed uh, surgical mask uh, in the Ziploc bag. If you have a student who comes to campus and has forgotten their mask, or you realize uh, that you actually took your you know, mask uh, out of the car and stuck it in the laundry and forgot it, and uh, here you are on campus, and uh, you don't have a mask, um, you can come to, to LRC uh, 330, and uh, you can interact with uh, the uh, wire shelf there, and uh, you can get yourself a, a clean mask, and uh, you can get yourself some wipes, some uh, Clorox uh, alcohol, uh, wipe, Clorox wipes or uh, alcohol-based uh, wipes. Um, they have 80% alcohol, which I guess they say 70% is what you need to be effective. Um, so they're 80% uh, alcohol wipes or they're just straight up Clorox wipes. Uh, Dr. Weaver has placed uh, some of those uh, in a Ziploc bag. And uh, you can get uh, one uh, or more of those Ziploc bags and wipe down your instructor station. Uh, each uh, instructor, uh, and we have a, a snazzy visual aid. I've, I've never accused uh, uh, Dorothy of being, you know, a hand model or you know, Vanna White or anything like that. But she, uh, she, she rose to the occasion there. So um, we have uh, we have those uh, that are all bundled up, and uh, we've ordered um, thousands more sandwich bags. And uh, Sarah, Sharon Fitzpatrick has thousands of wipes and thousands of masks uh, over in Central Receiving. Um, that is kind of the uh, stopgap uh, with regard to wipes. Uh, they have also ordered the gigantic kind of vats uh, of uh, wipes, and they're going to mix uh, their own antiviral solution and uh, pour that into the big you know, kind of vat of wipes and they will have one of those big vats of wipes uh, available on each floor uh, where instruction uh, is happening on campus. So there will be centralized wipes uh, coming to a location um, that you could potentially be teaching uh, from very soon. Uh, I don't have an ETA on those. Uh, they were uh, back ordered. Uh, uh, the the um, stop gap that we've put together uh, are these packages of wipes and uh, packages of masks and those are available for you uh, in LRC 330 and uh, you're of course welcome uh, to come get them. Um, facilities has asked that each time we use a common instructional area like a, an instructor station or something like that that we do um, wipe that station down uh, with one of these uh, wipes and prepare it uh, for the next teacher uh, who will be using that space. Uh, as the other wipes come in, um, our, our students will then have wipes available to them uh, that uh, they can wipe down their own individual instructional areas uh, with. 
I will say that only around 14% uh, of OSU OKC's fall enrollment uh, still has plans to meet uh, as, as normally scheduled. Uh, everything else, 86% of our instruction was transitioned to online or hybrid instruction. Uh, so only 14% of the schedule, and that's across all of the divisions, uh, remains uh, on-site, grounded, seated course. And uh, most of those are in subjects that are kind of difficult to take online, like firefighting, um, marksmanship, um, patrol techniques, um, how to insert an IV, um, you know, clinical rotations for nurses, right? Um, these are just things that we cannot do online. Literally, every single other thing uh, that the academic divisions and that uh, the professors felt like could go online uh, has been made hybrid or moved to an exclusively online uh, format uh, for, for the fall. And, uh, again, um, it, within that hybrid format, we encourage you to make as few trips to campus as possible. I, uh, I believe I shared with you that I had only planned to do four uh, on-site uh, class meetings. I did, uh, I did change that a little bit. I bumped that up. I went to five. Uh, but I am not uh, having my syllabus meeting until the second week, right? I feel like there's going to be a lot of people on campus that first week. It's safer to talk about the syllabus and all that the second week. So we're going to Zoom the first week and uh, let it kind of clear out a little bit and then talk about the syllabus uh, in the second week. So um, anyway, that was just uh, something peculiar that I did, you know, kind of with my class, but um, it made me feel safer. Uh, so we will have them to campus to talk about the syllabus, but that won't happen until week two. Uh, big one, um, grades are due uh, midnight, December the 13th. Uh, which is Sunday uh, at midnight. And uh, just wanted to get that um, date out there uh, as quickly as possible, uh, especially when we're all still in syllabus construction uh, phase. Uh, it looks like uh, the um, requirement uh, and the deadline uh, for uh, grades being due uh, is gonna be more uh, vigorously enforced uh, than it has been uh, in the past. Uh, in the past, we've had uh, really until that next morning, we've had until Monday morning. Uh, we even had, you know, as late as noon, uh, depending on, you know, who you talk to uh, among the professor up here. Uh, some of us uh, younger uh, folks, myself included, I remember that we used to have Wednesday uh, to uh, submit grades. And uh, some folks who've been here a little longer than I have, I remember that we used to have Friday uh, to submit grades. Um, I, I'm not really sure, you know, why we're truncating a uh, process that's supposedly more computer efficient, but we are. And uh, I would encourage all of you uh, to have your grades uh, submitted by Sunday uh, to avoid uh, extensive uh, paperwork. Uh, you may uh, have uh, some technology needs. Um, I have uh, toured uh, the classrooms and uh, have looked at every uh, classroom that we have a hybrid class scheduled for and uh, every uh, classroom uh, now has uh, a, uh, a plexiglass shield uh, at the lectern uh, for professors uh, to, to teach and uh, every uh, classroom uh, also has a, uh, a webcam uh, hooked up to the instructor station so you can simultaneously uh, zoom your, your, your hybridized class meeting and uh, broadcast that out to any students who don't feel comfortable uh, coming to campus uh, if you do arrange for the students to come and actually join you uh, on campus. Um, what I think is much more likely uh, to happen is that our instructors may choose uh, to come to campus and may choose to, to come to their assigned classroom and may choose to teach uh, from that classroom and uh, may teach to an empty classroom. Um, our instructors may come to campus and uh, choose to teach uh, from an office space or from um, this space, from LRC uh, 314. Um, there's, there's any number of different permutations uh, that work to keep everyone as safe as possible. But um, if you're kind of in a situation like I am, 
between my kids going to school online and my, my wife working online, um, you know, in our common areas, it can kind of sound like, you know, the Tower of Babel, you know, sometimes. So uh, I am delighted uh, to have a, uh, a dedicated place uh, to come and teach and uh, a dedicated place so that I can kind of come and Zoom and, and spread out and, and use for that purpose. So um, there are spaces on campus uh, that will fulfill that niche uh, for you and that need for you. And uh, if that's uh, something that you're interested in, just get in touch with me. We can schedule you uh, for some of these spaces. Uh, and of course, each of you have been assigned a room uh, for uh, your, your class as well. Uh, and you can certainly teach from that, that space uh, as well. Have uh, one other, um, I guess, uh, bit of an announcement, and then I thought we'd uh, get a little more interactive and uh, take some questions about, you know, what that might look like, uh, and what teaching is gonna look like. And uh, then uh, I'd like to conclude uh, with uh, just kind of a, a charge uh, for each of you as instructors and uh, briefly um, review uh, some of the uh, OSU OKC liberal arts values. And uh, I think that, um, you know, our, our regular values are, are one thing. I think that uh, we, we need to, you know, continue to embrace those, but we might have some additional values that are important uh, during a, a time of, of pandemic. The uh, last uh, announcement that I wanted to make was that uh, the Liberal Arts Division here at OSU uh, OKC uh, received a, a statewide teaching award uh, from the Oklahoma State Regents for Higher Education and uh, the Council for Online Learning Excellence uh, awarded the uh, Liberal Arts Division uh, the Team Leadership Award uh, for our hybridized honors courses and uh, we were exceedingly uh, delighted to, to receive that award, to be, uh, to be awarded that award uh, here this last March. And uh, I think that it's a, a tremendous, you know, uh, testament to the hard work and the excellence uh, that uh, many of our, our folks uh, put in uh, up here uh, in uh, preparing uh, their online content and in preparing uh, those special topics courses. So, uh, I see uh, several of you uh, who were affiliated uh, with some of those uh, special topics courses, and uh, you are uh, also winners uh, of that award. So congratulations! And uh, if you've if you've not you know officially taken a, a victory lap or you know kind of uh, you know patted yourself on the back, uh, I, I see a high five there from Elizabeth. So uh, high five uh, to, to all of you as well. And uh, that is a, a really nice, uh, I guess, a plexiglass uh, award, uh, kind of acrylic award uh, that we got. And uh, that's on display uh, in the division office, kind of uh, shaped like the state of Oklahoma and etched. And, uh, um, you know, as, uh, as Dr. Weaver said uh, when I was uh, talking it up, uh, you know, it's, it's a prestigious major award. Uh, so, uh, you know, with, uh, with our Christmas story, um, you know, reference uh, intact, uh, we proceed uh, accordingly. Drop by and check it out. And, uh, you know, if you're, if you're uh, one of the uh, people who participated in those, those Hibbets courses or putting on those Hibbets courses or taught, taught some content in those Hibbets courses, congratulations. And, uh, and thank you uh, for your contribution to that. All right. Do we have uh, do we have any questions uh, about uh, processes about um, you know how we're going to keep safe about uh, what we're going to teach how we're going to teach any of those things? Uh, I'm uh, trying to get to the chat here. Let's see. Okay. So, any questions? Well, perhaps a question for you. What, what do you do if um, a student gets in touch with you and uh, says that uh, they were exposed and uh, that they didn't know that they were exposed, but they were exposed and they showed up and uh, they attended your, uh, your class uh, on campus this last week? What is, uh, what's that process? What do you do next?
It's a lot of silence. <laughs> Um, the, uh, the, the next process is that you get in touch with uh, your department head and uh, the division office and let them know that there's been an exposure um, in your classroom. We are immediately uh, to get in touch with uh, Melissa Heron uh, in HR. And uh, Melissa Heron uh, in HR is essentially doing contact tracing uh, for the institution. So if it becomes uh, too onerous, that it's not something that she can work out uh, on her own, uh, she can invite the uh, county health department uh, to help her uh, in that process. But if you, uh, if you hear about uh, a student exposure and uh, you, you know, are made aware of that, uh, you are to immediately contact HR. And uh, HR then goes about uh, contacting facilities uh, facilities will shut down that potentially impacted space. So I guess if Pat's student is, you know, exposed and they had a class meeting, theoretically, Elizabeth's class could get shut down and prohibited from meeting because there was a person who had an exposure in your classroom. So I think what that, what that brief little you know, antidote illustrates is just the centrality of communication this semester. Um, we are all you know, kind of living in this educational you know, sort of ecosphere with one another. And it's impossible for any of us to be you know, completely isolated, you know, NBA bubble style uh, from what's happening off campus. And uh, it may very well um, wind up impacting you. Um, again, uh, the best thing that you can do uh, to make sure that uh, Pat and or Elizabeth students don't impact your instruction is to plan to teach and gather your learners in that classroom as, as infrequently as possible, as, as, as seldom as possible. So, uh, again, that is why we chose uh, that hybridized uh, format and put the judgment for all of that back on you. Um, you are the subject matter experts. You know what kind of teaching chops you've got uh, for various different lessons. You know how the technology impacts what you're able to do uh, in each of those educational spaces. So uh, we, we've asked you to make some of those determinations. All right, I see a question. I see, um, how are we teaching uh, your first week in Zoom if the syllabus is the second week? I will have uh, my syllabus posted and uh, my syllabus will be available uh, for review. And of course, if anybody you know, wants to look, uh, look at it and uh, you know, go over it, uh, they're welcome to do that. I typically have uh, my first uh, week uh, I have a syllabus quiz uh, that's available, um, and it's kind of low stakes, uh, you know. Uh, I've migrated that uh, to the second week. Um, if they have any questions about the syllabus, I'm available, you know, to talk about those. And of course, the syllabus is out there as a document, you know, for interrogation. Uh, I am hoping uh, that perhaps some of the questions that I get uh, when we get together and talk about the syllabus in week two will be a little um, more formulated uh, than they usually are. Um, I'm hoping that, you know, we can kind of get past some of the stuff that we typically talk about uh, in, the, in the syllabus, and uh, maybe they will have, you know, come, come to more of that uh, from, from actually maybe having read it uh, before uh, we actually, you know, get together to talk about it, uh, which would be rather novel uh, for, for the syllabus. So, um, I'm hoping uh, that that's how it goes. Uh, I may be very quickly disabused uh, of that notion. Uh, that's in my head. Uh, it, it, that's you know how it makes sense, and I'm hoping that that's what happens. Um, we will uh, we will cover an introduction to interpersonal communication uh, during the first week, and um, I always kind of look at that as the place where I share uh, my passion about interpersonal communication about how important um, IPC is to their lives, about how uh, their, uh, their earning potential uh, as future employees 
uh, will be impacted by that. Uh, their ability to participate in um, democratic discourse with their fellow citizens uh, will be impacted by their interpersonal communication abilities. And uh, indeed, you know, just how they're perceived by uh, their families, by their colleagues, uh, and by the world in general uh, will all be mitigated and uh, or enhanced uh, by their mastery of, of interpersonal communication. So um, I'm just kind of taking it in a little bit order. We're going to do logistics week two, and uh, we're going to do passion and why is this uh, course important uh, week one. But those are typically things that I get to in the first couple of weeks. Good question. All right, um, next question. Uh, just uh, for clarity, we ourselves do not contact the other students, nor do we post an announcement, correct? You, uh, I think, are, are welcome uh, to post uh, an announcement, and you're welcome, uh, potentially, uh, to contact uh, the other students. I think if that happens in a way, though, that is alarmist, uh, or if it happens in a way that spreads uh, misinformation, um, then it could potentially kind of lead to more confusion. Uh, so I, I would encourage you to, you know, allow the, the official process to kind of work itself uh, out. Uh, in particular, maybe if it's the first or the second one uh, that happens in your class, right? So let's, uh, let's get in touch, you know, with uh, department heads. Let's get in touch, you know, with the division office. And then we'll make sure that uh, Melissa knows and uh, that you know, students uh, are uh, contacted. The other thing is there's, there's kind of some, some different gradations. And uh, it's a really good question. Um, there's a difference between like an exposure and uh, between a confirmed uh, positive case. So um, the, the guidelines for sitting out uh, are different uh, for each of those. Uh, for a, uh, an exposure, we are typically going to shut a, a space down and allow that space to settle uh, for at least uh, 24 hours, and then it will be extensively cleaned. And uh, the uh, cleaning crew that comes in to clean up after exposures uh, has um, backpacks uh, that have sprayers on them, and uh, they're going to be spraying aerosolized uh, bleach or aerosolized alcohol solutions uh, on flat surfaces and uh, disinfecting uh, any of those potentially exposed uh, areas. So um, we, uh, we don't know, you know, exactly, you know, how long, um, you know, some of those uh, places may be shut down. I think some of that kind of depends on duration as well. I think they're saying anything less than 15 minutes um, they're not going to shut down. So, but if it's more than 15 minutes, the CDC says we have to let it set uh, for uh, a time. So if, for instance, we have a student who um, later, you know, reports that they were exposed and that person has been up here on the third floor walking to, let's say, a class that's in the speech room, um, then that person's time that they spent in the commons area and that they spent in the hallway does not qualify for a shutting down of all the common spaces and the whole building, does not qualify for a shutting down you know, of the hallway, but probably would qualify for a shutting down uh, of the speech room. And uh, from the you know, time that the uh, exposure, I guess, gets reported and from the time that they you know, shut the space down, uh, it's to be closed 24 hours and then it will be cleaned. Um, that could potentially mean that, you know, a place gets exposed on a Monday, it gets reported on a Tuesday, it sets for a Wednesday, and then maybe it's cleaned on Thursday. Well, we've, we've already pretty much missed the instructional week, you know, at that point. And you, you can see, you know, how that might have an impact on all of us, right? If uh, you were planning on being in that space and you were planning on using that classroom, we either need now uh, to find you a different classroom uh, to go to you know, that hasn't been exposed, uh, or we need for you to, to be able to teach that lesson online uh, remotely. So um, I think that having a remote plan and having an online plan, you know, for how you will, will handle any of those potential instructional disruptions uh, is really, really important.
Um, let's see here. So I think uh, I think with any of those things, um, you know, we have we have kind of a plan, and uh, you know, we we think we know you know what we're going to do. Uh, I believe it was uh, uh, the heavyweight Larry Holmes who said, "Everybody's got a plan until they get punched in the nose," uh, and I think that that's a lot like what we're going to see happen uh, here on campus. Uh, not that it's going to be, you know, a Donnybrook or a fisticuffs or anything else like that, but I think that we've got a plan. Um, the same way that, you know, the Georgia Public Schools, uh, who sent 900 kids home this week, uh, had a plan. So um, I think our plan's a little better than that uh, because it utilizes much more uh, online instruction and a lot more social distancing and uh, puts a lot more of those decisions uh, back into the hands of professors uh, who want to keep themselves safe and want to keep uh, their students safe, uh, as opposed to politicians that just want to reopen. So um, based on that, um, I think that, you know, we've got a plan and I think that, you know, we put together a, a pretty, uh, pretty good you know, plan to keep us all safe. Uh, but it's just that, it's a plan. Uh, and it's up to all of us to, to execute it. And it's up to all of us to you know, play our, our part and uh, do what we can do uh, to keep ourselves safe and to keep others safe. And uh, I, I believe very firmly that the, the number one thing that you can do to keep yourself safe is to, to minimize your trips to campus as much as possible. Any other questions? Okay, I will share uh, the um, the exposure um, protocols uh, with everyone uh, in an email uh, tomorrow, and you can kind of check those out uh, so you can see how long we're scheduled you know, to potentially be disrupted uh, if there's an exposure you know, versus a positive case, and uh, you can kind of see you know what those definitive processes include. But um, long and the short of it, contact your department head, contact the division office, and uh, we'll make sure that HR is contacted and uh, the, that whole process gets initiated. I think though that you can see it's, it's, it's pretty complicated. And uh, again, I'll say it for the fourth time, the number one thing that you can do to stay safe is to minimize your trips to campus as much as possible. All right. You can see one more here. Let's see here. Uh, now, I, I'm, I'm not sure there. Uh, it might have been Mike Tyson. I've seen it attributed to both. Uh, so uh, I, I go with Larry Holmes, though, because he's a little older. So we'll see. All right. Um, but uh, I, 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 I do appreciate the controversy there. So any other thoughts? Well, it's so good to see so many of you uh, tonight. Uh, Dr. Ainsworth and Dr. Weaver uh, are going to be in touch, and they're going to have a, a little follow-up meeting uh, with everybody uh, on Friday, at the uh, Thursday or Friday at the conclusion of week one, and uh, they will be in touch with some contact information about that. Uh, tomorrow afternoon, uh, I will be sharing with you uh, a, a syllabus that includes my attendance policy. Uh, you're obviously under no obligation you know, to follow my attendance policy, but um, you, can, you can use it as a template. Um, I believe it was uh, Bono, the lead singer of YouTube, said uh, every artist uh, is a cannibal and every poet is a thief. Uh, so maybe you'll find a, a line or two in my attendance policy that you like. Uh, I hope to comb through some of yours and, and maybe find a line or two that I like. And... Uh, in such a way, we will patchwork together uh, an attendance policy uh, for our students uh, for this term. I wanted to conclude uh, just by uh, sharing uh, a couple, uh, three or four values uh, that I think would be good things to remember uh, this semester. Um, of course, uh, since we're all going to be doing so much teaching online, uh, it's really important to understand that the two things that most impact your the, the student's perception of your effectiveness are immediacy and social presence. So even if you don't know the immediate answer to a question, uh, just say, hey, I've, I've received your, your inquiry and I'm thinking about it. Hey, 
uh, I've received that and I've asked somebody, you know, for clarification. Um, thank you for your communication. You know, that immediacy, if you can provide that, you know, pretty quickly, uh, students really, really respond to that. They think that you're really, really effective uh, because you should demonstrate immediacy. That's also like a nonverbal communication uh, premise. Uh, that the more immediacy you show uh, to other people uh, tends to increase their liking uh, of you and it tends to make them like you more. So uh, just, you know, some basic nonverbal interpersonal communication uh, principles there with uh, immediacy. Uh, the second thing is social presence. And what social presence uh, is, is that there's somebody, somebody driving the bus. There's a picture, you know, of this person. They've shared some of their interests. Uh, they get on and they Zoom and they... Uh, you know, they uh, self-disclose. Uh, we can tell, you know, kind of who they are. Uh, they're real people. Um, and I think that goes hand in hand with authenticity, uh, which again uh, is credibility. And that's a you know, basic public speaking, uh, authenticity and uh, social presence. Next is uh, curiosity. And uh, I think that uh, it's gonna be very important for us to, to uh, demonstrate some curiosity uh, for our students. Uh, curiosity about them, uh, because we're not gonna have as many um, in-class uh, interactions. Curiosity about our discipline. Uh, and when I think about curiosity, I think about asking questions. Um, asking questions of the students, who are you? Um, what do you dream about? What's important to you? Where do you see yourself? How can I help you get there? Um, curiosity. I think it's going to be very important for us to, to model some curiosity. Um, next is flexibility and availability. Flexibility and availability. Um, I've noticed that uh, our liberal arts professors that share their communication expectation or share their communication rhythm uh, with the students uh, in their syllabus uh, have remarkably fewer complaints about them not being communicative. Uh, so if, uh, if you check your email every day, you know, in the afternoon uh, and you respond to email, you know, every day uh, between 3 and 5 p.m., uh, then that's great. You know, share that with the students. They know that, uh, you know, somewhere around 3 p.m., you know, they can probably expect a response from you and uh, that you're you know, going to be attentive and that you're going to take care of, of their, their communication uh, at that time. We even had uh, an older... Um, gentleman uh, who did not like email very much and uh, he communicated that he was only going to check it once a week and uh, ultimately that was not very responsive uh, to the students but the students appreciated that they they appreciated knowing you know that hey uh, we're, we're going to answer email once a week on friday afternoon and it's going to be like you won the lottery so they 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 appreciate knowing uh, they just they just want to, to have some expectation of your availability and what that's going to look like. And uh, as long as they can predict it, uh, they tend not to complain about it as much. Next is uh, generosity. And, uh, I'm, I emphasized generosity earlier. I want you to be generous with your time. I want you to be generous with second chances. I want you to be generous with your presence. And I want you to be generous with your compassion. Um, each and every one of us is going through something that's unprecedented uh, within the last hundred years. It's unprecedented within our understanding of, of human interactions. And it's unprecedented uh, even within you know, our parents uh, and, and our grandparents' uh, understanding. Uh, my uh, grandfather um, was born uh, in 1918. Uh, so, you know, it, we, we have... A lot of intergenerational ignorance about what we're going through right now and uh, it's not unusual for you to feel you know confused or upset uh, for you to feel lost uh, for you to feel losses um, you can't contextualize all of those things um, you know at, at any given time it's also I think uh, really easy to forget that uh, our students are all going through all of that as well. And uh, they may be you know, experiencing uh, even more anxiety as a result you know, of some of those situations. So um, the, the, the less secure you are with your financial resources, uh, the more uh, the COVID pandemic has uh, implications for uh, your psychological well-being. 
and uh, many of our students really struggle with financial resources. So uh, it, it makes sense if you put you know two and two together that uh, more of our students are going to struggle with psychological resources this semester than probably ever before. If you can show up and you can be generous with your compassion, that will be very helpful for the students and I think for you as well. And then finally, um, I would say that some really good values uh, or behaviors uh, for us to emphasize this semester, both competency and innovation. Uh, competency in that we're going to take care of the students' needs. We're going to make sure that they've got great material constructed for them or that's been curated uh, for them. And uh, innovation in that we're all going to have to uh, stretch ourselves a little bit. Um, just like it felt kind of uncomfortable, um, you know, waiting out there and saying, this is my cell phone number uh, that I've never given to students before, but these are, you know, unprecedented times, so I'm going to share them. I'm going to share, you know, my digits with you. Um, we're, we're all going to have to innovate. And, and I don't necessarily know that, you know, sharing your, your cell phone you know, information uh, is an innovation. Uh, but it felt innovative for me. It felt like I was doing something new. Uh, it felt like I was doing something that might, you know, have some negative implications uh, because I wasn't familiar with it. Um, so from, from that sort of perspective, it took an innovation mindset for me to embrace that as a, as a new communication norm. Um, it may take uh, some innovative mindsets for you to embrace some of the other uh, ways of teaching and ways of being that you're going to be asked to perform uh, this semester. Fundamentally, though, uh, I am positive that if you show up and you are you, and you show up and you open up your, your heart and you open up your head and uh, you open up your homes uh, to these students, I know that you are going to make the magic happen. And that is uh, something that I have been able to hang my hat on. Uh, the entire time that I've been affiliated with OSU OKC, and that is that our instructors, top to bottom, make magic happen in our classrooms. And I know that it will be difficult to do because you're going to be seeing the students less frequently, but I am very positive that if you open up your, your heart and your head and your home uh, to our students, that, uh, that, that innovative pedagogical magic uh, the liberal arts at OSU OKC is known for uh, is going to be the natural result. All right. Any additional questions? Any additional comments? I so appreciate your time. Uh, let's uh, let's all remember to be generous and uh, communicate and uh, show up with that compassion. And uh, let's get out there and make some magic. Thank you. Have a good night. Good night, everyone. Thank you, Jason. You were wonderful with your words. Oh, um, I appreciate you. Thank you. Have a safe drive home, everybody. Yes. Good night. Good night. Good night. We'll see you. Good to see you.